West has repeatedly said it's not at war with Russia. Nous ne faisons pas la guerre. We are not waging a war against Russia, us Europeans today, but we support Ukraine. We are not part of this conflict. NATO is not seeking a war with Russia. And we are not interested in getting into World War III. In a conventional military sense, such as boots on the ground, that is exactly true. But unlike the warfare that is unfolding in Ukraine at the moment with troops and soldiers, war doesn't have to be fought like that these days. Enter a new dimension in warfare, crippling economic sanctions. OK, so waging economic sanctions isn't exactly a new idea. In fact, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson once described such measures as being more tremendous than war. What's different this time around is the unprecedented nature of the measures. Western countries have let all hell break loose as Russian banks have been cut off from the international systems. Big businesses have withdrawn from trading in Russia and the ruble has nosedived. And in this new battlefield, everyone is feeling the sharp end of these economic weapons. Certainly, ordinary people primarily suffer, but we all are on this ship together. It's a common responsibility. These sanctions are not reasonable. The matter should have been tackled through negotiations. Anyway, we've already been there in 2014, and back then we managed to handle it. I guess this time around we will get through with even more success. Of course, there will be a rise in prices. However, we shouldn't make a drama out of it. You know, I'm 82. I've been through so much. I remember post-war times, so now I'm reassuring all my loved ones. The main thing is that we have our country. Sanctions for a long time have been viewed as a non-violent strategy to deal with a whole host of threatening actions. But the economic impact of those, some experts say, isn't that different to a physical conflict. Both in their underlying goals and in their effects on civilian society, immiseration, starvation, disease, bankruptcy. These approaches to sanctions can produce measures whose function and consequences are identical to war. What's interesting, though, about economic sanctions is that their impact can have a strong blowback. Russia is one of the world's top three oil-producing states. Sanctions and companies' refusals to do business with it are now curtailing oil supplies, pushing the price up at the pump across the world. And for the U.S., sanctions could see the dollar take a dive. Established as the world's foremost reserve currency in 1944, it's long been seen as a safe bet. Many sovereigns, including U.S.-aligned countries, have realized owning massive amounts of dollars lead to an illusion of stability. In any moment, a political decision could lead to that dollar reserve being frozen or seized. The big winner from all of this is likely to be the Chinese yuan, but other currencies may also get a boost. Russia and India are looking at a ruble-rupee trade agreement. The rupee is gaining traction elsewhere too. The Myanmar government intends to initiate similar currency convertibility for the Indian rupee for trade along the border it shares with India. Such changes may see countries reduce dependency on the greenback. Its success since the Second World War has been based on these foundations of its credibility. If that's lost, then it could crumble. Charlotte Dubinsky, RT, Paris.